conform to the theory of evolution. A direct line runs from Darwin through the father of eugenics movement, Darwin's cousin Francis Galton, to the extermination camps of Nazi Europe. Hitler's book that he wrote, Mein Kampf, written in 1924 while he was in, much of it while he was in prison, between the two wars, it's full of evolution. You ought to read the book. It's, just, it's a boring read, for one thing, but it's just absolutely full of his evolution philosophy. Since the time he was a boy, he was dominated by this one thinking that one race is superior to another because of evolution. In this book, While Six Million Died, it tells about the story where Hitler offered to send the Jews to anybody who would take them. Hitler said, do you want the Jews? I'll send them to you on luxury ships if you want them. Do you know America refused to take the Jews? Roosevelt said, we don't want them. America had very racist immigration policies before World War II. Long stories there. You can read about the ship that came to Cuba and tried to unload their, prison, tried to unload their Jews and said, they said, we don't want them. They sailed all the way up the east coast of America. Every port in America refused to allow 900-some Jews to get off the boat. So they sent them back to Europe. In Hitler's book, Mein Kampf, he said, No more than nature desires the mating of weaker with stronger individuals, even less does she the desire the blending of a higher with a lower race. He talked about the mingling of Aryan blood and lower peoples. This is all based on a philosophy called evolution. One race has evolved farther than the rest. Now, who's an, who's an Aryan? And what are these lower peoples, anyway? Well, Hitler taught that the blonde-haired, blue-eyed Norwegians were close to pure Aryan. Did you follow all that? The blonde-haired... Blue-eyed, Norwegian, born, it's a daily dog. And he thought the Germans were mostly Aryan. The Mediterraneans are slightly Aryan. Slavics are half Aryan, half ape. Orientals are slightly ape. But the black Africans are mostly ape. And the Jews are close to pure ape. Hitler killed the Jews because of his evolution thinking. We fought a really big war. Probably 100 million people died in World War II altogether because of that stupid theory. It's not just dumb, folks. It's dangerous. Hitler also hated the black people. 1936, Olympics were held in Germany. Jesse Owens, the black American athlete, won the most gold medals, and Hitler walked out of the stadium. He said, it's not fair to make my men race against this animal. One of the Jewish prisoners who survived the Holocaust said, there's a difference between those who look upon their fellow human beings as common creatures of a common creator and those who look upon them as conglomerate of biologicals and chemicals. Is the human body nothing but chemicals? That's what Hitler thought. Man, we can get so many ounces of soap out of them and so many ounces of grease and so many ounces of hair and, you know, just chemicals. I've been to Germany several times. I read lots of books about Hitler and the Holocaust just to keep my blood boiling. What Hitler did was because of his belief in evolution. He thought they were an inferior species. So this is not just some kind of academic uh, discussion, folks. This is a dangerous philosophy. There's me at Flossberg concentration camp where they mined all the granite for Hitler's uh, monuments, okay, and millions and millions of people were killed because of Hitler's belief in evolution. Dumb, dumb idea. I stood in that spot where Hitler's standing in that picture, just thinking about this huge conference ground at Nuremberg. Hitler may try to make the individual feel small and the cause seem great. People are doing the same thing today with the young people. Hitler knew how to reach the youth of his nation. He wanted to indoctrinate the young people. By the way, Nazism is still alive and well in America. It's really alive and well in Wisconsin. One man in Skokie, Illinois, near Chicago, told the authorities he killed a plastic surgeon he found in the phone book because these plastic surgeons were making blue-tinted contact lenses and they're diluting the Aryan beauty. Picked him out of the phone book and killed him. Hitler thought that biological evolution was the best force to fight against traditional religion. Hitler said, I regard Christianity as the most fatal seductive lie that ever existed. Now, uh, Lutzer from Moody Bible Institute wrote a great book on Hitler's cross, how Hitler tried to hide behind the cross. But actually he was anti-Christian in everything he did. You should read the Barman Declaration. Go to the internet and type in Barman Declaration and see what, you wonder, where was the German resistance to Hitler? Where was the Christian resistance to Hitler? Why didn't the Christians do something to stop this guy? Well, we're going to wonder that someday. Why didn't the Christians in America do something to stop the New World Order? Why didn't they do something? Okay. Hitler used Nazi propaganda pictures like this, him walking out of a church with a cross above his head. It's all propaganda. He hated Christianity. Do you know I have Nazi baptisms and Nazi altars? You could be baptized into Nazism. It was a total religion. Hitler said, you tell a lie long enough and loud enough and often enough, the people will believe it. He said, people are more likely to believe a big lie 
than a small one. By the, way, by the way, the Japanese also thought they were a superior species because they had evolved farther. Darwin's book hit Japan, and people just loved it. I mean, the crazy religions they had in Japan at the time just absorbed evolution right into their thinking. When Darwin's book was translated to Japanese, everybody said, wow, what an amazing theory, evolution. And the next obvious step is, hey, if evolution's true, which race has evolved the farthest? Japanese scientists did studies to find out which race of people have less hair, and it was the Japanese. They said, see, we've evolved farther from the apes. They said we have milder body odor. They did real scientific studies to prove the Japanese had evolved farther. And that's why you won't understand what happened in World War II when American prisoners were captured and tortured like at Bataan, the Bataan Death March or the concentration camps over there. You're not going to understand why this happened until you understand the thinking of the Japanese soldiers. They hadn't been taught all of their life evolution. We have evolved farther. These are inferior species. It's really best if we eliminate them. The soldiers that survived World War II in German and Japanese concentration camps were amazed at how cruel the Japanese were. Just cruel to the prisoners. Well, they thought they were an inferior species. Evolution is the foundation for communism. Communism is a theory that believes uh, that God does not exist or is not necessary, that man is responsible, ties hand in hand with humanism. Roger Baldwin, the founder of the ACLU, the American Communist Lawyers Union, said communism is the goal. The purpose of the ACLU was to advance communism. That's why they were founded. Now Moses Mordecai Marx Levy, alias Karl Marx, the founder of communism, had written a paper when he was 17 years old telling how much he loved the Lord. Then he went off to college, studied philosophy, turned his back on God, and developed his theories of communism, which go hand in glove with evolution. Did you know 75 percent of kids that go from Christian homes to public schools are going to lose their faith after one year of college? You parents better think long and hard before you send all your kids off to school. Are you sending them off to a secular university so they can make more money in life? Is that your goal? Are you willing to risk, you know, three-fourths of them? I'd recommend at least one good year of Bible college before they go to a secular school, even if it's not accredited, just to get them grounded in the Bible and really get them grounded in creation before you send them off there. High casualty rate at those places. Now, Karl Marx later said in life, he said, my objective in life is to dethrone God and destroy capitalism. Karl Marx is the founder of communism. He based his philosophy on evolution. He tried to dedicate his book to Charles Darwin. He wrote a letter to Charles Darwin. He said, dedicated to Charles Darwin from a sincere admirer, Karl Marx. Darwin's wife said, honey, you better not accept this. Uh, <laughs> this may be a little much, okay? Karl Marx had six children, never worked a day in his life. Three of his kids died of starvation in infancy. Two others committed suicide. Not a successful model father. When he died, six people attended his funeral. Karl Marx developed, though, in 1848, the Communist Manifesto, how to destroy a country, how to have it take over, be taken over by communism. First thing, you abolish private property. Now, everything Marx did intentionally was anti-Christian. If the Bible's for it, he's against it. See, the Bible makes private property a real serious issue. Ownership of private property is critical. You can't have freedom without property rights. What good does it do to say you got all kinds of freedom if there's no place to exercise your freedom? Hmm. Leviticus 25 says the 50th year was hallowed, and it's the year of Jubilee. You could not possibly lose your property permanently in the biblical system. It says every man has his own vine and his own fig tree. Drink waters out of your own cistern, waters out of your own well. Private property is essential. But Peter Burrell, president of the Audubon Society, said we reject the idea of private property. Huh. Guess where I know where he got that. Karl Marx.